DIGs, the senior police officers here, also the press, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning. I wish to warmly welcome you all to this conference, which is a continuation of my management tradition to constantly engage strategic managers across all commands in the Nigeria police towards regularly evaluating the internal security profile of the country. This is with the intent to keep abreast with the dynamics of crime and to jointly discuss pathways towards either strengthening existing strategies or evolving new approaches. Within this context, to know that the strategy so far in place and the commitment demonstrated by officers across all ranks in the Nigeria police within the past months have combined to aid in stabilizing the internal security profile of the country. In consequence, between January 2019 to date, this include 1,629 armed robbery suspects. 1,053 suspected kidnappers, 1,023 cultists, and 482 murder suspects. In addition, 1,181 firearms of various descriptions and calibers, including improvised explosive devices and rocket launchers were recovered in various police operations across the country within this same period. 389 stolen vehicles were also recovered from criminal elements, while 506 kidnapped victims have been safely rescued. It is pertinent to mention that of the rescued victims, 300 were secured in Zamfara State alone with 249 of this number rescued from 9th to 23rd July 2019 from bandits and militias operating in the forest in and around Zamfara State. The foregoing achievements are indicative of the fact that the trust, the trust gap between the Nigeria police and the citizens have been narrowed such that the communities are now demonstrating impressive commitment towards partnering with the police in presenting a common front against criminal elements. It is also suggestive of the fact that the institutional capacity of the police to undertake specialized operations, take the anti-crime war to the camps and safe havens of the high-profile criminals, and respond to any scenes of violent crime has also been significantly boosted. Above all, the achievements are indicative of the effective effectiveness of Operation Pop Ada and other strategies in place by the Nigeria police to address prevalent crimes in the country. In order to sustain these gains, we have commenced the process of implementing the community policing concept which involves the engagement of citizens in identifying and prioritizing prevalent communal security threats as they affect their communities, and working together with the police towards developing and implementing solutions to the identified threats. <coughs> in giving effect to this, we are drawing on the provision of the Police Act in relation to the recruitment and utilization of special constables, who in this instance will engage as community policing officers under the coordination of the Nigeria police towards evolving a community-focused policing architecture. The breakdown of the community policing deployment plans covers the recruit recruitment of a total of 40,000 community policing officers across the country in the interim. The community policing officers will be recruited from within the communities where the prospective applicants reside. An average of 50 community policing officers are to be engaged in each of the 774 local government areas. 
In addition, 1,300 community policing officers will be drawn from the professional bodies <coughs> like the Academia, Road Transport Union, Artisans, Traders Associations, Religious Bodies, Women Unions, and Youth Organization, amongst others, in order to ensure diverse representations. The community policing officers shall be deployed to complement the police in law enforcement functions within their localities by performing low risk and non sensitive duties. They will also act as, act as liaisons between the police and their communities. This policing architecture will free all conventional police personnel that will hitherto perform such functions, and hence our manpower profile in relation to deployment to frontline operational duties. When fully implemented, the community policy, policing strategy will bridge the gap between the police and the citizens in a manner that will enhance optimal, cost-effective, and sustainable law enforcement service delivery by the police. In evaluating our policing strategies, I am to note that there are still some security challenges which currently require our professional attention and which will constitute part of our discourse during this conference. First has to do with the recent violent campaigns of Islamic movement in Nigeria, which are clearly designed to destabilize the country. The second is the spite of kidnapping in the southwest geopolitical zone of the country, <coughs> while the third is the activities of bandits, particularly in some states in the northern part of the country. The activities of the Islamic movement in Nigeria led by Sheikh Ibrahim Ezezaki has over time evolved to constitute a grave threat to national security, law and order, social, religious harmony, peace and governance, and the sovereign integrity of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. The members of the Islamic movement in Nigeria have engaged in extreme radicalism, series of terror-related activities, violence and other unlawful activities which are inimical to the national security interests, good governance, and the corporate existence of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Some of these nefarious activities include the following. One, pledging allegiance to foreign countries from where they are enjoying political, financial, and training support with the aim of advancing their destabilizing intent within Nigeria. Two, is the unauthorized blocking of public highways, engagement in illegal roadblocks, imposition of illegal curfews and checkpoints, raids on security assets, <laughs> prevention of arrests of their members, invasion of court promises to abort legal proceedings involving their members, refusal to submit to ordinary security checks and attacks on security agents, which led to the death of several Nigerians. Three, setting off of a paramilitary guard known as Huras, through which Islamic movement, of, of, uh, Islamic movement in Nigeria has been terrorizing local residents. They have also instituted unregistered security outfits and perform paramilitary ceremonies, hosting of flags, combat exercises, parade, and inspection by the Islamic movement in Nigeria leader, reminiscence of the state authority. Four, provocative preaching and hate speeches aimed at inciting members against, against non-members non while working towards his agenda of creating an Islamic state in Nigeria and challenging the leg legitimacy of the federal government of Nigeria in favor of the <coughs> Islamic movement. No recognition of the Nigerian constitution and no recognition of state authority, no recognition of our democratic values and disrespect for our judicial processes. Five, the Islamic <coughs> movement in Nigeria has over the years manifested its penchant for launching attacks on Nigerians and symbols of state authority. Since 2018 till date, 
the Islamic movement in Nigeria has engaged in coordinated and organized violent protests within the federal capital territory. Six, two weeks ago, the Islamic movement in Nigeria extended its violent protests on 9 July 2019 to the National Assembly <coughs> in the course of which they violently attacked and fatally injured security operatives in an attempt to overrun the National Assembly and threaten the nation's democratic order. The protesters overwhelmed the first gate of the complex. The protesters overwhelmed the first gate of the complex, inflicting damage on the security posts, and marched on to the second, <coughs> second one just before the main complex where the lawmakers were in session. The protesters also damaged the police vehicle and several other vehicles belonging to visitors, lawmakers, and staff of the National Assembly, who also sustained varying degree of injuries. Six, seven. On 22nd July 2019, the Islamic movement in Nigeria members again launch another vicious cycle of violent protests around the federal secretariat during which they set a substation of the National Emergency Management Agency uh, containing a truck and ambulance on fire. A deputy commissioner of police, Usman Umar, in charge of operation at the Federal Capital Territory Police Command, and Precious Ogolabi, a National Youth Service Corp member in the FCT, were killed, and several others injured with many properties destroyed by them. The violent activities of Islamic movement in Nigeria, under the guise of clamoring for the release of their leader, who is being detained on the order of a court of competent jurisdiction in Kaduna State, has not only confirmed their disdain for due legal processes, but has heightened tension and insecurity in the country in a manner that confirms that their motiv motivation is to destabilize the country. It is obvious from the foregoing that the activities of Islamic movement in Nigeria constitute glaring defi uh, defiance and rebellion against the Nigerian state. Calculated efforts to plunge the nation into ethno-religious war, intimidation of citizens and security agents, disrespect for Nigerian laws, and the authority of the commander-in-chief of the armed forces. The activities also clearly and consistently negates Section 1, Subsection 2A and B of the Terrorism Prevention Amendment Act of 2013, and, sec and Section 2A, B, A, B, C of the Terrorism Prevention Amendment Act of 2013, and hence justifies their prescription in overriding national security interest. Although this meeting will review this and other general security situations and in place appropriate actions, action plans that are targeted at addressing this threat, let me affirm that in relation to the Islamic movement in Nigeria, in view of their increasing engagement of terror tactics and other violent and subversive activities which contravene the Terrorism Prevention Act of 2013 as amended and via the judicial pronouncement of the Federal High Court Abuja on the 26th of July 2019, the federal government has classified them as a terrorist group and has accordingly proscribed the El Zazaki led Islamic movement in Nigeria. In consequence, henceforth, any person engaged or associating in any manner that could advance the activities of the proscribed Islamic movement in Nigeria shall be treated as a terrorist, enemy of state, and of subsassive um, element, and shall be brought to justice within the context of the Terrorism <coughs> Act. The impact of this is that all forms of procession or protest by Islamic movement in Nigeria is now illegal and thus banned. The police 
and other security agencies are fully committed to giving full effect to this judicial pronouncement in the interest of our internal security and national cohesion. In this regard, I wish to solicit the support of members of the public, specifically in the provision of information that will aid in the identification of the location of the Islamic movement, of, Islamic movement in Nigeria members and their mentors and sponsors, as well as in working with us in apprehending and bringing them <coughs> to justice for the purpose of clarification. Nigeria is a secular state with, constitution, with constitutional provision guaranteeing the freedom to practice our faith. This, however, must be exercised in a manner that will not threaten our national security. Hence, it is to be emphasized that while the adherents of the Shia sect in Nigeria remain free to continue to practice their faith, and shall be guaranteed adequate security to do so as the judicial order does not stop them. The Ezezaki led Shia Islamic movement in Nigeria, which does not recognize or accept the constitution and the government of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, is the sole organization that has been classified as a terrorist organization and proscribed. I want to commend all the strategic commanders and their officers and men and their officers and men for their dedication to duty and the sacrifices they have to make in the line of duty. In this context, I wish to particularly recognize and condole the family of late Deputy Commissioner of Police, Usman A.K. Umar, and Precious Owolabi, the National Youth Service Corps member that lost their lives during the recent violent campaign of members of the proscribed Islamic movement in Nigeria and Abuja on 22nd July 2019. I also commiserate with all other police personnel and citizens that were injured or had their val uh, valuable assets vandalized during the violence. I can assure that the perpetrators of this tragic <coughs> and unguarded act shall in the fullness of time be identified and be brought to justice. As I have already asked the DRG in charge of first criminal investigation to take a full investigation and give us report as to what happened that day and who killed who on that day. The war against crime is as dynamic as the society. I therefore wish to charge you all as strategic police commanders to redouble your efforts in ensuring that the lives and properties of the citizens of this great country are protected and safe at all times. This is our sacred statutory responsibility and, and we must continually strive to adapt our strategies, provide the requisite leadership and make the ultimate sacrifice to achieve it. Finally, let me seize this opportunity to appreciate the citizens of this country and to assure them that with their cooperation, we shall continue to present a strong and impregnable front to defeat our common enemies, which are the criminal elements that are bent on threatening our cherished values and livelihood. I thank you all for your attention and I pray for God's continual guidance over you all as you commit to serving our great nation. Thank you. If the members who decide to come out again, I've said it in my speech, we'll get them arrested and we shall prosecute uh, them under the Terrorism Act of 2013 as amended and we've solicited for the support of members of the public wherever they know these people are, where they, where they are hiding, and their sponsors. They should work with us, give us the information, so that we can fish them out and get them uh, face the law. Thank you. <laughs>